get started. Let's stand and start this morning service by singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Thank you, Jim. That is an excellent hymn, and can we do Christmas carols all year? Because that would be great. Um, but I understand we cannot, and so welcome to Emmanuel Baptist Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We're getting late in December, and I must say it's quite a bit different in the weather today than it was yesterday. Um, so it got cold on us, but... It was nice evening last evening, and thank you to everyone who participated in the Nativity. Thank you, Pastor, for leading and organizing it. It was, it was great, and I hope it's something we can do going forward. So that said, whether you're here present with us physically or you're streaming this anytime between now and Christmas Day or whenever, wherever you may be, welcome. We're glad you're here with us at Emmanuel Baptist Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. And I'm going to work through a few announcements here. Um, one, I, I've neglected to do this last week, and it's important. So remember, we're having a canned food drive, and we're going to be continuing collecting canned food to work with Bream's um, Food Pantry to have food for those in need. You can stack it out up there. You can see the cart out there. So bring in canned food. Let's keep that up. Uh, along similar minds, I remind everybody, please prayerfully consider giving an extra gift to the benevolence offering. Um, the deacon's benevolent offering thing was down. I know we've got some in it, but that's a continual need. And I think everybody knows that a lot of folks are going to continue to have financial struggles as we move forward. Um, also a reminder that the gift offering, Christmas card to give a gift so we can get out how to head of the HVAC. And many thanks. There's a list in your bulletin. I've seen the cards out there. Thank you to everyone who's participated in giving to the gift offering. And then in really exciting and fun news. This sun, this Friday, Christmas Eve's Friday, so this Friday at 5 p.m. here in the Great Room, we'll have our Christmas Eve service, um, always a great part. Um, look forward to that, so please come out on Christmas Eve to be here for the service. And so, as we move forward, the fourth Advent candle is love, and... Um, just want to say something briefly, and it's going to come from 1 John chapter 4, and verse John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. And this is so important, folks. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And propitiation is a hard word. It took me forever to get my mind around it, but that is the word where Christ died for us and suffered and died and rose again that we might have eternal salvation and peace and harmony with God and his kingdom. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the greatest gift, the greatest blessing that ever has been bestowed on the earth. Let us go before God, thankfully and humbly. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing your people here together. We thank you that we're able to sing praises. We thank you that we're able to hear the word of God. We're thankful for our salvation 
sin and your great overpowering love that you send into earth at Christmas time, Lord God. And we are just so thankful for all that's going on, all the opportunities we have. And Father, we pray for your guidance. We pray for your direction going forward. We pray that your inner voice is in our hearts as we sing and as we listen to music. And we pray, Father, that you as pastor, as he brings the word and your spirit is working and motivating us, Father. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that said, I'm going to invite my family up so we can light this Advent candle. As we come forth, as we come to the fourth Sunday of Advent, we focus our, love, our thoughts on the love God has for His creation. It is His lavish love that is displayed in the coming of our Lord Jesus. Jesus, God the Son, left the portals of heaven to take on human form so that we could understand His great love for us and to ultimately give Himself for our sin. We learn of his love through the familiar Bible verse, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus came from his honored and exalted place at the right hand of the Father to enter our history. He came so we might know of God's plan of redeeming sinful humanity and to show us the love of the Father. As we read through the Gospel accounts, we see time and again how Jesus loved and ministered to the deepest needs of those who came to him. In this Advent season, may we quiet ourselves so that we may experience the love of, of love God has for us. May we focus ourselves on Him as we spend time reading our Bibles and being in prayer with Him. May our lives be so filled with overflowing that His love overflows the brim of our lives to spill into the lives of all we meet this Advent and Christmas season. May we be witnesses to His boundless love. May we freely share His love and tell the story of Jesus. In this season, of Advent has allowed us margin in our lives to experience His hope, peace, joy, and love. May we move through this final week of Advent filled with anticipation and the awe of the first Advent of our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow this morning in awe of your plan to redeem us. You came to earth as a baby born to a young virgin so we might be able to truly know you. Thank you for doing the impossible and bringing your plan to redeem our lives. Thank you for your hope, peace, joy, and love. May our faith deepen each day this week as we ponder the truth of your incarnation and the depths of your love. May we know you in our own hearts as Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Stand with me as we sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Yeah. 
Silent night. Pray for our tithes and offerings. Lord, Heavenly Father, giver of all that is good and great, Father, we thank you for our abundance. We thank you that we are able to give and that we are able to move your kingdom forward and play a role in it. We pray, Father, you take every last dime we give and utilize it to glorify yourself and build your kingdom in our home, Charleston, West Virginia. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. I am glad that you're with us this morning on this Sunday before Christmas. Are you excited? Are you ready? I'm actually ready. I did my shopping before the 23rd, which is a, a first, so we're good. How's your homework coming? Going good? All right. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. A couple weeks ago, I asked you to work on uh, reading each day and maybe memorizing verses 1 through 7, and last week, 8 through 14. Uh, Yep, we got it up there. So, if you would join me, let's read together, and maybe you're reciting Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, the Christmas story. Yep. In those days, everybody with me? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from Naz the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there with Mary, his pledge married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go and, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you. I know some of you were standing. If you haven't stood, if you would stand. We're going to re read verse 7. It's our text for this morning. As Luke gives us that account, he says, And Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. May the Lord bless the hearing and our reading and reciting of God's Word today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the gift you've given us of this day. We thank you for the breath of life that began our day. We thank you for the health and strength and mobility that you bless us with. We thank you, Lord, for this season of time for us to put margin in our lives, to slow down and to just rest and reflect and ponder how great this gift that you gave to each and every one of us, how, Lord Jesus, you left the throne of heaven to come and walk here among us. Lord, I pray as we would reflect upon that thought today, 
that you would help our minds not to race to events that we're anticipating today or the days to unfold, and equally not to be caught into the yesterdays of life, but for this precious moment. Just center us in your presence, God. Let our eyes be fixed upon you, the author and perfecter of our faith. And Lord, I ask that these simple words I've prepared, that you would allow them to be a means by which you speak your very message to the depths of our hearts this day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I want us to really focus on this, this, this amazing, awe-inspiring event, God the Son. I'll say that again. God the Son left heaven, clothed himself with flesh so he could walk here among us. That's what Christmas is. It's easy to get caught up in all the other things, but I really want us just to pause and really ponder the fact that on that night, Mary gave birth to God the Son. She gave birth the means by which He entered into our human history. He pre-existed that moment, folks. It was Him coming into our history so that we could touch Him, we could hear Him. We could experience Him. It was so that God was able to come and truly tell us and demonstrate in a way that everyone could hear and understand His great and mighty love for us. So as we think about what that verse says, she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger. Wow. Wow. But that moment was reality because of what's happened before. And so let's just rehearse here quickly so that we, we don't lose sight of what's taking place there. It starts with Joseph and Mary, right? They were betrothed up in Nazareth, 70 plus miles away. They're living, and the angel Gabriel comes and says to Mary, you're going to become pregnant, and you will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus because he'll save his people. He'll save all people from their sin. I mean, that's the prophecy. That's the promise. And so you have Joseph and Mary. Mary is a young girl. She's a virgin. She loves God with all of her heart. She's walked with God. She lives in a town that's pretty insignificant as far as Jewish history is concerned. And of that day, nobody that was Jewish really wanted to talk about Nazareth because it had a bad reputation. But there lived Mary. She loved God. She had a whole heart for God. She wanted to serve God in any and every way possible. So when the angel came and said, this is what I've chosen. She said what? I am the Lord's servant, right? May it be to me as you have said. I mean, that faith that we looked at last week. And then Joseph, who equally is a godly man, he loves the Lord. He works hard as a carpenter. He's a craftsman. He works with his hands. He forms and creates and he builds. And he has this whole heart for God. He serves God. He follows God. He believes in God. He wants to walk with God every day. And he and Mary are anticipating the moment when in just a few months, when he gets the house done and she's prepared, that they'll come together and be husband and wife. And it's against that background that God steps in and says to Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary, for the child within her is the Son of God. And he is God with us. What? Emmanuel. Joseph and Mary, because of their obedience, because of their willingness to do what God was calling them to do, they entered into what was a long journey. And it was a long journey in two ways. It is a long journey because physically it's a long ways from Nazareth to Bethlehem. But it's a long journey in another way, emotionally. 
They were on this course, preparing to be wed and married and to have a life together and to live in Nazareth and Joseph to have a respectable business and to serve God and to serve his fellow men and to give his all. And Mary was going to be this faithful wife. And as she would give birth, she would raise their children so they'd have a fear of God. But God turned all that when he called and it all changed. And as we know from the Luke 2 account, it's not in Nazareth where she gives birth, but it's in Bethlehem. And when she gives birth, she gives birth to this son. It was, had been an emotional roller coaster for her. Because as she had to tell Joseph, she's pregnant. And it's not his. It's not anyone's. It's Christ coming and forming in her womb to be born. So he would be fully God and fully man. It was Joseph's life being turned all upside down because no one was going to look at him the same because they'd all think this is a story to cover the reality of not being chast. It had been emotionally a long journey to get to Bethlehem. They were weary, they were tired, they were spent, and Mary is about to give birth. And those miles, they were long miles. Anybody here walk 70 miles at one time? Okay, didn't think so. You might have felt like it, but you didn't. 70 miles is a long ways. And because the route that every Jew, good Jew, took, they didn't go directly north and south, which is the 70 miles. They crossed over at the edge of the Sea of Galilee into the area of Perea. They go down the other side of the Jordan River till they got to Jericho. They crossed back over into Jericho, and they would go on into Jerusalem and on into Bethlehem. It wasn't a straight shot. You did not travel through Samaria. So it was more than 70 miles. And even at 20 miles a day, and that's a walk. Because it wasn't flat. It was over mountains, and it was around valleys, and it was in treacherous areas, and there were thieves and bandits all over the place. Three, four days, good trip. But with Mary, it took a long time. And when they finally come to Jerusalem, it swelled to its seams because everybody that's a descendant of anybody that's ever lived in Bethlehem, they have to be there. And in Bethlehem, that town just pressed to the seams. Joseph can't find a place for them to stay. And the innkeeper in his kindness lets them stay in his stable. And it's there that she gives birth. She gives birth to this firstborn, a son. This child, it had been a long journey, it had been a long trip in every way imaginable. And in that moment, there in the quiet and stillness of that stable with just the sound of the animals and all the smells that go with them, you have this baby born. And she and Joseph strip strips of cloth from their undergarments so they can wrap him to keep him warm. And there they lay him in that manger, in that food trough that Joseph had put some fresh hay. And there they marvel at this little boy. They count his fingers. And his toes. They run their fingers over the edge of his ear. When his eyes open, they look into those eyes and they see this little defenseless, helpless baby that is totally dependent upon them. As they marvel, as they ooh and all. There's the realization that this one that Mary holds, this one that Mary nurses, this one that Joseph rocks in his arms, he will deliver them. He will deliver all the world. This little tiny baby is God. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. 
And there, as they hold this little baby, they hold the one that had been promised for hundreds of years. The one for thousands of years that God said would come and would deliver, would save, would redeem this little baby boy. Wow. He is the Messiah. He's the one that will deliver Israel. He's the one that will deliver the nations. He's the one that will deliver humanity from the grip of sin that grasps hold in the garden. He's going to bring to fruition this plan that has been from old that God would redeem humanity. He buys back. And that's this child. This baby is the one. He's the one that had been prophesied. He's the anointed one of God. He's the chosen one of God. He's the servant of God. He's the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And he is God. Not just someone, but the one. God the Son, clothed in flesh, here among us. And there Joseph and Mary marvel, they ponder, they retell each other their story of the angel's visit. For Mary, he comes. For Joseph, it's in a dream. They praise God and they worship God because this child is the one. The Messiah. He is Emmanuel, God with us. I don't know about you, but every time I take the moments to ponder that, to reflect upon that, to think about that, I come back to one question. How can it be? How can this be? How can God leave heaven and enter human history? How can God redeem us? And when you think about Joseph, how can this little defenseless baby that's totally dependent upon us be my Redeemer and Savior? He is. It's moving. It's powerful to ponder and to think and then to treasure in your heart. Joseph and Mary marveled at the birth of Jesus. They worshiped at the birth of Jesus. They wondered at the birth of Jesus. A songwriter several years ago wrote a song, actually in 1982. His name is Michael Card. It's a powerful song that captures from Joseph's perspective that all. I'd like you to listen to the words of that song this morning. How could it be this baby in my arms sleeping now so peacefully the Son of God the angel said how could it be not my own not of my flesh seems not of my bones still father let this baby be the son of my love father show me where 
I fit into this plan of yours? How can the man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life, I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small, his face and hands so fair. And when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. But when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life, I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? How could it be this baby in my arms? Sleeping now so peacefully, the Son of God, the angel said, how could it be? That's a powerful song. <laughs> but the chorus really just catches my attention. When Joseph asked the question, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. It's been months he's been preparing. It's been months he's been reflecting. It's been months that he knew this time would come. But in that moment, as he looks at that little child, and as Michael Card has so adequately, I think, captured the moment, how can it be? And how do I fit? And what do you have planned for me, God? I want us to ask that same question this week. As Christmas comes, we're remembering, we're celebrating, we're reflecting, we're pondering on the one who came. And you know what? He came as part of a plan, right? It wasn't happenstance. It wasn't just a, a moment, but God had it all orchestrated. Paul even said, bold to say, at just the right time, God sent Jesus. The time in all of human history that he had chosen, that was the moment, and Jesus came. And Joseph asking, I'm sure, that question, Lord, how do I fit into this? I'm just a carpenter. How am I supposed to raise your son? How am I supposed to teach him? He's the one who's created all things. How do I fit into this plan? How do you fit into God's plan for this week? How will he want to use you? And how will he want to use me to take this wonderful message that Christmas is celebrating the entrance of Christ into humanity so that he might then go and die on the cross for our sins and be the one who propitiates our sin and gives us life that truly displays God's love? How does God want you and how does God want me to play into this week so we get to tell the same story? We get to announce the same good news, that whether it's to family, whether it's to a friend, whether it's to acquaintance we just meet, how do we demonstrate Christ? How do we point them to Jesus? How do we help them slow down in all the noise and all the sound and all the excitement and all the joy, and those are all great things, but how do we help them to realize and not miss that it's this baby, that he's the one that we're celebrating. He is the one that are focused. He is the one that changes us. He's the one that gives us life. He's the one that promises heaven to us. How do we fit into the plan for this week? How does God want to use you and how does God want to use me? I hope we ask that question as we think about 
the Christmas story. Will we marvel Christmas morning? Will we be set before God and be in awe? Will we ponder who this child is whose birth we're celebrating? Will we be moved? Will we be challenged? How do we fit? What will the plan be? What does God want to do to us? Will we ask the question, how can it be? How can this one be? And know that he is. He is God the Son. My prayer for my life and for your life is that as Saturday comes, we are just excited and we're anticipating and we're filled with joy and we're filled with excitement that God funnels it all to that moment. When we pause to look through history to that manger and to see that baby and to realize who he truly is. My prayer is that you will at that moment be able to give him praise for your salvation because you've accepted him as Lord and Savior. But if not, then my prayer is that you'll be drawn to him, that you'll want to give your life to him because you realize that this child is the Messiah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that in your sovereign wisdom, that at that moment in human history, in the midst of the occupation of Israel by Rome, along with all the surrounding regions, at that moment when a census has to be taken, at that moment when everyone is bustling back to their town of heritage, in that moment when Joseph and Mary can only find a stable to find refuge in, in that moment, you came and you entered our history. You came so that we could hear, we could see, we could touch, we could experience, we could know what it means that you love us, God and that you were willing to give your all for us. Lord, I pray that those of us who know you will, will be a time that we just celebrate and we worship from the depths of our hearts. But Lord, if there's any that don't know you, that are here or watching, the Lord, we'll be ready, we'll get prepared. The Lord, we might ask you to come into our hearts as your spirit draws us and calls us. Lord, may this Christmas be a time that we stand in awe and we ponder and we reflect and we treasure in our hearts the moments and the message of the moment. Lord, show us how you want to use our lives and how we fit into your plans for this week. Show us, Lord, who you want us to tell about you who you want us to share with why we're celebrating. And Lord, may our words and our actions go in sync. Lord, I pray that it would be a week that we can share and evangelize those around us, helping point them to you. Lord, may we give ourselves the margin we need in life to slow down and to reflect and to celebrate you it's your birth that we're celebrating. May we let that be the focus of our hearts and minds. Lord, bless these moments. As we sing this song, may it be a time of invitation, an invitation of us who know you just to lean in a little tighter into your embrace. And if there's any that need to come to know you, that today would be their day of salvation. Lord, Use these moments to your glory and to your praise. 
we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our invitation hymn is What Child Is This? Let's stand and sing, please. Let's go to the world and tell them who that child is this week. Let our focus be on him, our Redeemer, our Savior, our King. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time we could share together. And Lord, as we depart this place, let us go into the mission field you placed us in to encounter the individuals and the people that you have already designed and you have put in place those divine appointments. Lord, may our lives reflect what's in our hearts. May our words herald the good news. And may this week be a time that we ponder, reflect, and we share with those we encounter the reason we celebrate you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming and entering our human history. Thank you for coming in a way that we could hear, understand, and receive the good news. And Lord, may we walk with you daily, and may we be free in sharing that with those around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Merry Christmas.